<laughs> did I volunteer for this? And uh, I keep questioning my, you know, after the first mission and even the first four or five missions I was doing. And to this day, I don't remember volunteering, but thank you for ever volunteering me. <laughs> and that's another story. I have an idea who it was. But, um, but on, uh, when we're, we were talking, a friend of mine who was doing a, a, a little video for our, our company, uh, and, uh, that's Nancy Romero Bowers. She has her own her little video uh, company she's building. It's called Passing Thoughts Productions. And uh, she was doing, a, a, she wanted to do a video about our company because her brother-in-law served with us. So she wanted to do something for us. So she was in our reunion in 2015 and interviewed seven of us. And uh, I remember what was ironic about this interview that one of the guys, she was interviewing Warren Lahara, and this is his quote, so I want to give Warren credit for that. Warren, she was talking about it, and he says, oh yeah, when you went on one of these missions, it's like going to a, 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 a camping trip to hell. <laughs> I thought, very good description. <laughs> so, but uh, it was, uh, it was uh, quite interesting. In fact, uh, one of the funny things, well, it's humorous now, I don't know about then, but about a third or fourth mission, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, how in the hell did I, how did I get into this? You know, was I going to go home alive? That was always the thought. And uh, we were inserted late in the afternoon, and it was triple canopy, and we're moving into a, this uh, really heavily camp camouflage, or, you know, what it, or jungle, we were in a jungle, and we're actually at the top of a very sheer, it's a very sheer, although it was gross, but it was a very sheer drop down quite a ways, but we set up uh, for our perimeter there at the top of that. Well, about 9.30 at night, I hear this ungodly, ah, and crashing and banging, I said, well, you're in the jungle, you know. I said, yeah. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, like, and the noise went on for, it seemed like all night. It didn't, but it seemed like all night. And I'm thinking there was an M16. I said, and I said, I'm waiting. I said, if whatever comes up over that hill, I'm, it's going to get, I'm going to empty this baby. <laughs> That's why, you know. I was thinking, wow, not only do I have to worry about Charlie blowing me away, now I have to worry about being eaten. I don't think so. <laughs> and you know, the jungle out there. Uh, that, that was, I remember that. Yeah, it, it was a jungle. And it's a very unusual country. You can actually be uh, in, in, in a rice paddy and not go maybe 1,500 meters or clips. And you get into uh, elephant grass, or you actually you could get into triple canopy jungle. Different, different way and wait a minute bushes and the whole the whole nine yard it, it could change pretty quick sometimes which would which made it really you know unusual to operate it because it was the train could change very quickly in different extremes and uh, yeah the wait a minute bush was hard to get or the wait a minute bush was hard to get through and really really because it would just what we call wait a minute bushes because it was here and, and we're trying to be quiet and get through this stuff. And you're crawling through this, you know, very slow, swift, you know. You Plus you're guys. carrying a hundred pounds. Yeah, on your back, yeah, and you're trying to get through it. And then you're looking left and right and bottom beside you and you see, oh, you see little snakes crawling through this stuff. You see big spiders hanging here. And, uh, you know, they say everything's bigger in Texas. No, nah, it's bigger in Vietnam. <laughs> bigger bugs, <laughs> bigger snakes, bigger lizards. Yeah, everything's bigger in the jungle, and uh, uh, it was uh, it, that was yeah. You see spiders that might have a, a, the base of their, their body in the side of your fist, and mm. but this you know the, the funny thing about it, the snakes, and lizards, and none of that stuff seemed to bother me. Only two things that ever really bugged bugged me or bothered me in Vietnam. First was the leeches. The leeches would get you on, and you wouldn't know it. They would be, and they, they, they were very rude. They didn't care what they hooked onto. 
so yeah you mm. find the leeches yeah you didn't feel you didn't know it till you either you know actually broke one or you're taking your shirt or pants down or something and there's a leech hanging on you so i uh, hated the leeches that was and the most unpleasant thing were the rats is you would be sleeping at night you know and you're you're you know, five or six guys, you're trying, you're quiet. You might even talk for seven days, six or seven days. You're not talking because you've got to be dead quiet. So you're, you're you know, you're, somebody's awake doing pulling guard, but you're there, and all of a sudden you feel something going, walking up. And then you feel that cold, wet nose touch your face. And I go, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, that, did not like the rats, and, uh, and I could swear when I, I went back to Vietnam back in 2012 and stayed with a friend of mine who, who was living in Saigon at the time, and uh, I was up on his third floor of his apartment building looking down. It was early in the morning, and I could swear I seen a rat carrying a cat. I could swear. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, it was, it was quite, uh, it was quite a, And the cat looked confused. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, was, it was quite interesting going back, that's for sure. So, um, uh, when uh, we first started to get back to uh, pulling missions, in the first part of December, uh, I started pulling missions in, in, for the company in December and January, and they were still getting a, a lot of uh, more there was still a lot of movement and stuff like that. But in fact, later in the end of January, before the, the offensive actually broke out, one of the teams that were heavily camouflaged were close to a trail, and all of a sudden they hear a lot of movement in the middle of the night. And they started counting as the NBA and our BC coming by them at a pretty good clip. They quit counting after 115. So, and, and they were just feet, or maybe even inches from this many people going by it, so. And that, that's one of those days when the heart pounding so hard, you know they had to hear your heart beat. They know the enemy had to hear your heart beat because it was beating so hard. So, wow. just a wonder we all didn't die of a heart attack. <laughs> but it, it was, that was, that was pretty ironic. And then when it broke out, um, you know, there were several missions that were going on during that time frame also, and there was, there was a lot of movement. In fact, uh, uh, there, I have a whole list. Yeah, actually, if anybody's really interested, you, go, you, know, you can, I have a report here, but you can actually go on to the F Company 51st Infantry Long Range Patrol Facebook site, which is open for the public and is now open because, for a study group. You can look at all these missions in, in the photo section if you want, listen to the stories, whatever. So there's a lot of information there about that. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, my first mission. I was wondering when I, I, taught, I wrote about my first mission. In fact, I've written about four missions, and they're the most, the ones that were most significant. But when I look back at it, all of them were, you know, were significant because I pulled 20, I think 20 missions when I was in F Company, and then when I was transferred into P Company, so I got another eight missions. Uh, before I left the country. But uh, in my very first mission, uh, we went out uh, after a bomb strike, bomb strike assessment. And we went late in the afternoon, got inserted, and uh, this was my first mission. I'm still, yeah, <laughs> what the hell was going on? I, uh, what, what have I gotten myself into? And, uh, and I think, well, I better, I, I better watch and hear and listen and see what everybody's doing. If I, you know, if they, they've been doing it for five months or four or five months. So if I want to survive, I better be learning real quick, like what, how, and well they were doing it. And, and they were survived. So they had something to teach me. And so it was, uh, it got dark and it was probably, I'm thinking, probably close to 6.30, 7 o'clock in the evening. And uh, a VC came running straight at us, and one of the team members you know, opened fire and dropped him. Well, he was still alive, so you know, our team leader and uh, 
I, I, maybe I shouldn't mention his name, but I'm going to. Okay. Yeah, uh, should I? Should I? It, it's up to you. Okay. Well, the team leader was my staff sergeant, uh, David Carter. And uh, that was the only time I went to field with David Carter. But anyhow, uh, he called back headquarters and said that uh, we had made contact. We have pretty badly wounded and like to be extracted. And they said, okay, but it, you know, it's gonna be a while. And first, and now you have to get back to the LZ through the jungle at night, carrying a prisoner that's badly wounded. And uh, as we're, you know, gathering up all our equipment, stuff getting packed, and we started heading back to the LZ. And we're, we're taking turns trying to help, you know, carry the, the wounded uh, POW. And now my jungle fatigue, this is my first mission. So when we went in, it was very, very hot. So my fatigue were soaked, they were soaked with sweat. But now it's getting cold. So now that now I'm, I'm cold, my fatigues are cold. Cause it gets dark, it got dark, got cold. And, and, and you know, you don't think about it, but it gets, it gets cold at night, just like out here in the jungle, or out here in the desert, you know, it cools down. So I got cold jungle fatigue on. And it, it was so surreal because as I'm carrying this badly wounded guy, you know, his warm, I could feel his warm blood running on me. And that was, that was pretty, knew it was a real deal then. So, um, and we get back to the LZ and uh, they're waiting to, we finally made the LZ, but in the jungle when they dark to find their extraction LZ. That in itself is amazing. Thinking about it, I think about it anyhow. We got back to our extraction LZ, and first Sergeant, Sergeant, Sergeant Carter, team leader, handed me this strobe light. And he says, hold it straight up as high as you can and flip it on. I go, oh, shit, I've got to turn this light on. I'm gonna stand up here high as I can reach. Turn on the strobe light so the choppers can see exactly where we are. And I'm thinking, well, am I gonna buy it here because I'm, I'm holding it straight up? I'm gonna let it go this way or that way, I'm holding it straight up. So am I gonna, is this gonna be my first and last mission? <laughs> so we, well, you come in, chopper got in there, I flipped that, I sent that chip, I flipped this from him. We got on the chopper and got the hell out of there. And we got, took the, the, the prisoner right to the medevac hospital right away. And he was, he was still alive, but I don't know how. He was still alive when we dropped. Now I don't know, I don't know if he survived his wounds or not at that point. But that was my first mission. And I'm thinking, you know, this is, um, this is pretty unusual to do what we were, what we were doing. 